When we make a rendering, it's often a good idea to put our building in a real-world setting next to other buildings. Inserting a rendering of our model into a photo can make for a very realistic image, and it also explains clearly the relationship between the building and its neighbors. Now the challenge is to view and render the Vectorworks 3D model at the exact same angle as the camera that was used to take the picture. If we were drawing manually, we could build perspective guidelines based on the visible features of the adjacent buildings in the picture. So for example, in this photo, we could draw the right-hand guidelines first, and then the left-hand guidelines, and then the vertical ones. The guidelines converge at the vanishing points, and we use those points to draw the new building at the correct angle. This is a basic technique in three-point perspective when we draw manually. Now in Vectorworks, we don't draw manually, but rather work with a 3D model. We can create views of the model and make all sorts of adjustments, but it can be very difficult to match accurately a view of the model with a view of a real-world camera. We can overcome this problem with a tool called Camera Match. With this tool, we draw perspective guidelines just as if we were drawing manually, and then the tool uses these guidelines, along with a reference point and a reference dimension, to calculate the exact camera position that we need to show the building correctly in relation to its neighbors. Camera Match has four components. Two of them are commands available in the View Camera Match menu. These are Place Reference and Place Camera Match Object. And two others are tools available in the Visualization Palette. Camera Match Mask and Camera Match Shadow, and we'll talk about these in a minute. To use the Camera Match tool, we go through three basic procedures, each with subtasks. The first step is to prepare the file. The second is to use the Camera Match tool to draw perspective guidelines, insert an image of the model, and then adjust views of the model. And the final step is to use Camera Match to do final touching up and then render the view in RenderWorks or in, in another rendering method. So let's take a look at each of these steps. The first step is to prepare the file. Now the Vectorworks file needs to contain two things. First, on one or more design layers, a 3D model of the building or portion of the building set to an isometric view. Second, a sheet layer containing a viewport showing the 3D model. Now in addition, we'll need a photo of the site or of the place where the model needs to be inserted and we can store that picture anywhere on the computer. We'll use Camera Match to import that photo into the file. We will also need to know a real-world dimension of some part of the building shown in the background photo. Ideally, this would be a horizontal distance along the roof or windows from one corner to the next. This dimension will be used to give the 3D model the correct scale in the final image. The second step is to use the Camera Match tool to place an image of the 3D model within the photo and then adjust the view. So first we'll place a Camera Match reference on the 3D model. This reference creates a 3D point on the model and we will match the same point on the background photo later. This will help align the model, the model with the photo. So go to View, Camera Match, and then Place Reference. And now double click on the spot that we'll use as the reference point. And notice that the reference has a green line to align with one horizontal edge of the model, a red line to align with another edge, and a blue line to align with a vertical edge of the model too, just as in the sketch that we prepared manually earlier. Next, we'll go to the Sheet Layer Viewport and enter the Viewport's Annotation Mode, and we'll do almost all the work from this point forward within the Viewport's Annotation Mode. Now we'll place the Camera Match object in the Viewport's Annotation Mode. So go to View, Camera Match, Place Camera Match Object. The Camera Match Settings dialog box opens. And now import the background image, click on the Import New Image button, and navigate to the spot containing the background image file, which in the case of this exercise is the folder containing the exercise file. The name of the photo is Background Photo 1 JPEG. And then the Image Import Options dialog box opens, make adjustments if you like, and then click OK. 
And now the camera object is located in the file. It contains the background picture and it also displays perspective control lines that we will align with portions of the background photo. Now the camera match object also displays a camera match preview object with one green face and one red face and we can adjust the dimensions of this preview object in the object info palette. You just click on the preview object settings. Or we can make it invisible and we do that by clicking on the show preview object checkbox and then we deselect it. Now we're going to adjust the perspective control lines. So first we'll notice that the blue, green, and red control lines have labels such as L1 as in left one and R2. If you can't see them, increase the text size in the command menus. So just go to text and size and then enter a font size that you prefer. Now we're going to start with the blue vertical lines. So grab the top handle of line V1 and move it to a spot near the top of a vertical line in the photo toward the left side. Now we'll click on the bottom handle of line V1 and drag it to the lower part of the same vertical line in the picture and make sure that line V1 is really completely aligned with the vertical line in the background picture that's aligned accurately. And now we'll do the same with line V2 toward the right side of the photo and then after that we'll do the same with the horizontal lines. Now the lines labeled R1 or L1 align with the tops of objects and the lines labeled R2 or L2 align with the bottom of objects. And it's important to know that these don't necessarily need to line up with the actual tops or bottoms of objects in the picture. They just need to be located near the tops or near the bottom. And the more separation that there is between the top and bottom lines, the more accurate our final image is going to be. Now, one of these control lines needs to line up with a part of the building in the picture that we measured in the field. And in the next step, we will apply that field dimension to that control line. So let's do that. In the Object Info Palette, click on the Measured Line drop-down box and select the line that will receive the field dimension that we just discussed. And now in the Object Info Palette, we enter the actual measured dimension in the Measured Length data box. Now we're going to locate the reference target on the photo. Earlier, we put a camera match reference on the 3D model, and now we'll place a camera match target on the photo. The target has to be placed on the same spot on the photo that is intended for the reference on the model, and this way the reference on the 3D model and the target on the photo will be perfectly lined up. So move the cursor over the camera match target until the cursor changes to a double arrow, and now click and drag the camera match target to the intended point on the picture and then click to place the target. Now we're going to display the 3D model in the viewport so click on the set view to match button and the 3D model is now visible in the camera match object. Now when it first appears the 3D model may not be perfectly aligned with the control lines but in the next step, we'll fine tune the size and angle of the model's view and then bring the view of the model into proper alignment. By the way, we can change the appearance of the model while fine tuning by going to the object info palette and clicking on the tuning render drop down box. We can select from wireframe, hidden line, and dashed hidden line, and then click on the fine tune view button to activate this. Now notice that this rendering method only applies while we're fine tuning and not when we're making the final rendering. So let's go ahead and fine-tune the view of the model. In the Object Info Palette, we'll click on the Fine-Tune View button, and then the Fine-Tune View dialog box opens, and we can see that each of the buttons along the top controls a certain aspect of the view. So select one of the buttons, and then move the slider, and the appearance of the model changes immediately as we move the slider. Now, 
In some cases, the correction that we need to make is pretty obvious and it's easy to select the proper control button. For example, if the model is not pointing properly toward the left vanishing point along the green control lines, we can select the top left button and then move the slider until the view is correct. Or if the model looks too large or too small, we can try to adjust the camera distance button on the top right. And sometimes the view needs a combination of different types of adjustments. So try multiple combinations in small increments to see if the corrections help. And in any case, to cancel the last adjustment you made, just click on the Revert View button. Now once we're done with the adjustments, just click on the Save button to finish up. We can see a preview of the final rendering by going to the Object Info palette, and then we click on the Final Background Render button, and we select a rendering method, and then we click on the Render Viewport button. At this point, the rendering preview will display with all the control lines visible. So we get to see what the rendering is like along with the control lines. And if we want to avoid seeing the control lines in this view, all we need to do is go to the Object Info palette and deselect the Show Control Lines checkbox. Now in the next step, we're going to use Camera Match to do the final touching up, and then we will render the model. Now there may be objects in the foreground of the image that appeared to be covered up by the model. We can render the viewport and then use Camera Match to mask portions of the 3D model and then blend them in with a background photo. Now it's important before rendering the viewport to exit the viewport annotation mode. So let's go ahead and render the viewport. In the Object Info palette, we'll click on the Background Render drop-down button and select a rendering method. And for this exercise, we will use OpenGL. And now we will click on the Update button to render the viewport. And notice the parts of the 3D model that cover up objects in the foreground. These parts will be masked in the next step. Now we're going to do Final Touch-Up. So enter the viewport annotation mode one more time, and in the visualization palette, select the camera match mask tool. Now we're going to draw a polygon in the area of the image that we want to mask, and it's important to make it larger than the items we want to mask, for reasons that I'll explain in a minute, and then double click to finish drawing the polygon. And the polygon mask now will display the portion of the background image that lies under that polygon. And with this visible, we can now create a second mask, drawing the second one accurately exactly around the parts that we want to mask. And when we finish doing the second one, we can delete the first one, which really is a temporary mask. We can also simulate missing shadows by using the camera match shadow tool. We'll select the camera match shadow tool in the visualization palette and then in the photo, just uh, draw a polygon in the shape of the desired shadow and double click to finish. We can also create thin shadows. And we do that by clicking in the camera match shadow tool preferences button and selecting line mode. And this will let us draw lines instead of polygons. Once we're done, we exit the viewport annotation mode. And now we can render the viewport in Final Quality RenderWorks. All right, so let's go back and recap the basic steps to use with Camera Match. The first step is to prepare the file, and that means having a 3D model of the building and also a sheet layer viewport of the model. We also need to have a background picture of the site or location that we're going to use in the rendering, and also at least one dimension that we took in the field that we're going to use to give scale to the 3D model when it is rendered. The next step is to use the camera match tool to place an image of the 3D model within the photo and then adjust the view. And there are eight different steps here, starting with placing a camera match reference on the 3D model and ending by adjusting the view of the model using the fine tune controls. You can see the steps here. And then finally, the last step is to render the model and then use camera match to do the final touching up. And that means we render the viewport and then we can use the camera match mask and shadow tools. 
Now one thing to keep in mind is that we can use camera match in any situation where there's an object like a building that needs to be shown in the context of its surroundings. But we're not limited to entire objects or buildings. We can show, for example, changes to parts of them and how those changes fit into the existing setting. Now this has been an overview of the camera match tool. There are many more refinements and adjustments that we can make both with the tool and with other related items. One of them, for example, is to make sure that the Heliodon used with a 3D model on the design layer is adjusted to match the north direction, location, and time of day of the background photo so that the lighting and shadows in both the rendering and the photo match up properly. Now the creator of Camera Match, Matt Panzer, has prepared an excellent series of video tutorials that cover many of these issues in great detail. And the links to these videos can be seen here and also in the text that accompanies this chapter.